Okay, so Didi, you you wrote to me an email, okay. and you were you were talking about having some difficulties connecting with unseen therapists. That's what you said in your email, but you were you were focusing on the idea of forgiveness. Your mother recently passed away, but you have a number of forgiveness issues with both your mother and your siblings, sisters. I have that right. Uh, brothers also. At the time I wrote the email, I didn't realize that, that it, it's now it's like all five of them. Oh, okay. All five siblings. Yes. Oh, all right. My okay. mom actually, I, I don't feel like I have issues with my mom. It, it was um, an interesting experience going through it. Um, I had already, I had already gone, started the process a couple of years ago. And I was, more, when I was, when we first met, I was more working on early issues of the feelings of not having a mother. Um, and then as I, as I accepted it and got through the anger with my mom, I still thought possibly those issues were there. And so I wanted to kind of look at that, but with all this happening with her passing and the way I was with her and I took care of her had hospice at my house, it was a very beautiful experience. I, she, I was with her just when she passed and it was a very peaceful, real, I would change it for the world. It was just the most peaceful experience ever. Um, anything, anything about my mom, the, the anger, everything's gone. Well, now, one of the things we talked about prior to this recording, um, was that you, you know, you've been one of our, our students in our advanced course for a while. You haven't been able to get into it with every thing you'd like to yet. So you're doing it kind of piecemeal and so on. But you have worked on some of these things with your mother with our course. Yes? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go close this door, Gary. There's okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, you, you worked on those things with your mother. Uh, I don't know if you're able to, to discern this or not, but I remember you and I worked on some stuff once upon a time as well, a few months ago and so on. But the fact that your mother passed and you had this beautiful experience and you seem to have a lot of forgiveness going on, was any of that, as far as you know, contributed to by your past work with our course and, and um, your mother? Um, possibly, yes. You know, there hasn't been a lot of time to, to think about stuff. It's been so, it's so recent. She passed on the 11th of uh, uh, September. Um, That's about three weeks ago. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Gary, yes, because... We, we, we did our session a while ago, a few months ago, and um, yeah, it prob there probably was some, I would have to say, because even when I worked with Anne, um, it just was, the intensity just wasn't there as far as, I didn't really feel like, oh, I, I got to keep on this issue. I've got all this stuff with my mom. I didn't have that feeling. Okay. You know, I, I, I just, I felt, I felt more, I just felt... Um, where, where the things that would normally bother me about her, uh, uh, talking to her, I didn't judge her anymore. It'd be more like a smile would come on my face. Like, oh my gosh, that's just my mom. And I didn't have the pain of not feeling loved because it was more like, where's my mommy? It was always like, mothers are usually that, oh, honey, this or honey, that. And how'd, you, how'd that go? I never had that. Yeah. So I was, I was like longing for that. And I just kind of, so possibly, yes, Gary, I mean, it, it, could have played a part. Well, one of the things I have to point out, and I don't really know because I'm not you and I don't walk in your shoes and this kind of stuff, but I just want to explore this with you because we're going to go a similar direction with your siblings, okay? <laughs> um, but a lot of times the results that occur with unseen therapists are very powerful, yet they are so subtle we don't even notice them. If I'm remembering correctly, you had a big time issue with your mother I did. 
big time. I, 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 yes, and I took I took notes too. I don't have to look at them now, but yes, I did. I uh, had a I had a lot. I had so much anger, I had anger anger for years, and so much pain. Where where I go to visit her, and it was so painful leaving. I'd always cry on the way home, okay. and then I th- came to the point where I can't even go see her anymore because it's too painful. Because I don't All have right. a mom. Not, we didn't fight or anything like that. It was just it was just this feeling of I don't have a mom. Okay, I now. Have, you know, I'm, if I'm hearing it right, work that you and I did, and with Anne Ryan, which you talked about, you know, she's one of our advanced students and so on. If I'm hearing it right, all of that intense stuff about your mother has tended to fade by the time you got to her passing. I'm, this is what I'm hearing. The door was now open to have this beautiful experience because the the difficulties had faded, 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 faded. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth. That's just what I'm hearing. Does it seem right? Well, it had started, like, even even before I started Unseen Therapy, before I joined, um, it had I had already started the process of it. Um, but then we, I've worked on it since, like, by myself. And then with you a little bit, but for me, it's like, I was expecting, like, like you say, you're not going to get all these bells and whistles. I was expecting that, even though you tell us not to, <laughs> I still, I, I still thought it's not working for me. This isn't working for me. I feel nothing. I didn't change. I still have, I still have insomnia. You know, I still went through all the things I still have da, 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 da. And I just, I just thought it just doesn't work for me. So, you know, what can I say? It's oh, like, okay. it, it, you want these, you want this, like this big experience. Like you want it to just be gone. Like, okay, I go to sleep every night and I don't wake up for eight hours. That's not true. Okay. So, well, I, so I judge what, it. Oh yeah. And, and what you want, what you want is all of this immediately. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I don't, I don't want to do any work on it or yes. a little piecemeal here and there. I want it. I want to do a thing or two and then it's all gone. And I want it now. And, then, and I so want then it anger, now. So then anger really plays a big part. <laughs> yeah, I want it now. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't work for me. Although <laughs> what I'm hearing is you had a rather substantial fading of very substantial mother resentment, anger, et cetera. Yes. Over time. It's completely gone. It was completely gone. I, okay. I took care of her. Completely. Okay. But it. But it, it didn't hit you with bells and whistles all of a sudden. Nah. No, not <laughs> oh, at all. Hollywood at all. moments. Sometimes that happens, by the way, but I'm just pointing it out. I'm just pointing it out. Yeah. And, th- and that's, that's to put in perspective the door we're going to walk into here having now to do with your siblings and so on. Okay. So without getting into details at the moment about the siblings, I want to ask you something. Uh, um, when you start thinking about their behaviors or your resentments about them or whatever has been going on, um, can you get to a, uh, what, if you really dwelled on it, what number on a zero to 10 scale would you, <laughs> I think I already know the answer. <laughs> it's, what a number? it's a 10. It's a 10. Okay. 10 and, 10 and higher. 10 and higher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your posture changed and your breathing changed and with, with, <laughs> Did with, it? with, with the, yeah, yeah. With the, well, it's pretty obvious, you know, go oh, look at the video. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I send it to you. Okay. Um, so anyway, anyway. Yeah. We got to, we got to clear that out. Let's get well, rid of that. We're going to do a good, we're going to do what we call a good start. Okay. Yeah. That kind of thing has typically lots of past foundation to it Mm -hmm. and probably the current activities current statement is bouncing off of something unresolved a long time ago okay well we'll we'll explore that some but i want to ask you something else first okay (laughs) we're eventually going to bring an unseen therapist okay but we want to put as much on the table for her as we can the more we can put on the table, the more we can reframe some things and start looking at it through different eyeglasses, different glasses and so on. Um, 
the more effective unseen therapists can be because that means we're, let, we're willing to let go of more things and, and so on. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> the, without getting into details about who said what, where, the behaviors and all of that. Okay. I want to talk about only your current response to all of that. It's a 10. Okay, I got it. <laughs> all right. Yep. All right. Now, the question I want to ask you is, does that re your response to all that's going on costing you? Yes. How does it cost you? Um, they are distancing themselves from me. Or possibly I'm doing the distancing. They've chosen a side. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me ask my question differently. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean to you in terms of, does it, co does it cost you love? Does it cost you health issues? Does it, what does it cost you in that sense? I think that the fear of it is, is that it will cause a health issue because of the anger. Um, so I pretty much know how that works. You know, I, if I'm holding this anger, you know, it's gonna affect my liver. It's gonna affect, it's gonna affect different parts of my body. And so well, I- Yeah, go ahead. So um, the, the love, affecting, you asked me about love, is it affecting love? Well, I don't necessarily think I get love from them either. So I don't know about the love. I think it's probably more, I'm more worried about the physical of it if I can't let this go. Well, let me explore love here for a moment. If I can, all of us, all of us need, we look for, pursue love in its various forms. Something is, I mean, the romantic love, yes. Um, but the, the applause, acceptance, compliments, uh, warmth, affection, touching. There's lots of different doorways that we look at for love. Okay. Now, if you have not experienced love with your siblings over time, then in one sense, you're not losing anything. Am I saying that right? Yeah. It, yes, it's more kind of the love that my, in my whole family, the love is kind of an odd love. We've always been together. It almost feels like a tribe. Like we stick together, but it's kind of surface stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and many families have that to one degree or another. I mean, it's just, that's, this is not unusual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what I want to get in, what I want to get explore with you on the love issue is here's little you, little Dee Dee born long time ago. Okay. And like every other little child, you seek love. Now, apparently mother was not a great source of that. Everything was surfacey. Your siblings the same way. Um, and so you're seeking it, but not getting it. How am I doing? That's true. Okay. And we want that. So we pursue it other places. Okay. Uh, we pursue it with a romantic partner, maybe, or, or there's lots of ways. We get a pet. We get, there's lots of, lots of other ways to help fill that gap. But the family gap, it's a fairly big gap if I'm hearing it. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's the kind of thing. Now, always correct me if I'm wrong, because I have to put things together, because I don't know everything in, about your world like you do. Yeah. But that's the kind of thing that as a starting in childhood, young ages, we develop some, we may not use this term, I'm going to use it here, but we develop some kind of resentment about it, some kind of anger about it, some kind of I want that and I can't get it kind of kind of response to that. What's wrong with me? I'm not lovable. You know, some anxiety to use your terms. Uh, is this on target? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what I'm what I'm exploring here is that 
while your sibling's current behavior and things they say that gives you a 10 is likely bouncing way back off of something, you know, a, a something way back when, okay? I see you're nodding your head. Yes, I'm sure yeah, there's a lot of things way back when, I don't know, yes. Okay, so let's get back to my previous question about what it's costing you. So you said, yes, love, but maybe not so much because you never had it to begin with, but I wanted to explore that some. It's like not having it much of it to begin with a surfacey kind of thing is a, <laughs> is a cost. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And then there's the physical things. Now, I, I don't know if you and I discussed this before, but one of the things that, that any doctor will tell you this, by the way, if you're carrying around, even subconsciously, mm -hmm. anger, resentment, guilt, fear, you know, all these negative emotions, your system literally creates a cascade of negative, my term, simplified yes. term, negative chemistry in your body. Yep. Your, your, your adrenaline goes out of balance. Your cortisol goes out of balance. There's hundreds of repair mechanisms, you know, chemical equations in your body yep. pff, you know, go all right. Your immune system's got to go do something with that. Otherwise, yep. you're in trouble. And so it shows up as things like physical stuff, including insomnia, by the way, which is, you can call it physical or emotional, if you want, whatever. It, it manifests all this stuff. The point is that the resentments that you currently have, justified or not, are costing you. Right. Now, don't just go along with me. Oh, no, I'm with you. I'm not, I would never just go along. I totally, yeah, I, I'm with you 100%. Okay. So wait, let's be theoretical for a moment. If you could just let go of all that resentment, right. uh, that would be a big, that would be freedom, would it not? Yes, it'd be awesome. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Something like, if I'm hearing this, I forgot the word you used. You were talking with your mother. She was passing and you had this beautiful experience with her but it was like these aren't your words but you you give me your words but to me it was like oh it all went away oh all the resentment all it didn't need to be there was a freedom there with my mother uh, you didn't say those words but it was something like that describe yeah. what happened describe what happened could you you mean the actual when she passed or just like this the whole the the, the scenario how it started well because well, i no. just went go ahead what i'm looking what i'm looking for i'm sorry to interrupt you Dee, Dee but what, I, what i'm looking for is somewhere along this hospice scenario was this release of your resentments for her somewhere in there did i say it right release did i say that right yes yes and it it, it the whole process actually felt that way um, from, from, from her going to the hospital and just me, just everything was just from my heart. Like there was no thinking about anything else. There was no, what else do I have to do? Oh, I have to give this up to take care of this. I just went into, I just went into action and I took care of her and I took the hospital, which she had to go to a, a home care. It was like all this process, crazy process went on. And my brothers and sisters were just in la la land, like normal. And I don't really care about that, even though that's for me to say that pisses me off. It really doesn't because I wouldn't change it. I wanted to be the one. I'm happy that I was the one. And so that for me to have that thought is like, why am I thinking that? I don't care that they weren't there. It, but yet I have this other anger for them, I guess, that's making me feel that way towards them. But with right. my mom, go back to my mom. So then when I brought her home, they, they said, no, it's going to be too much. And I said, it's not too much. I'm doing it. And I just took control the whole time. And normally I don't do that with my brothers and sisters. I've always kept my mouth shut, brought her to my home. She was, she was only here a couple of days and nobody else would let, like, she didn't want anybody. My older sister, who's a nurse. She didn't want, my mom didn't want any, but wouldn't take anything. Like, mm, she just, she, nothing. But then 
when I was with her, she did everything I wanted to do. Like if I needed to give her something and she didn't see well, she wasn't speaking, but um, she was letting me do what I, whatever I needed to do to help her. Like she'd accept the pill, she'd accept everything. So the whole process with her and I in that unspoken word, just the love, just the love that was there, it was palpable. Like, you know, it was just, it was, and I could just sit with her and I wasn't, I wasn't in tears and upset about it. I was very peaceful. And when she passed, so I went, so I took care of her the night before. And then when I said, I'll get a couple hours sleep. And so I went to go to sleep. Maybe I woke up 6.45. I said, oh, let me just go in. She was, she was like the room right next to me. I went in and I could tell she had this, she was just very peaceful and I still was at peace. And so I sat next to her bed and then um, my niece, my niece was in the room and she, she sat next to me and within two, three minutes, she waited for the two of us and we were the two caregivers. Everybody else was gone. She passed. And it was, it was just a, uh, she was, I just knew that where she was going, she was happy and peaceful and that I was peaceful. Yet, yet, if I got it right, Dee Dee, there's a long history, decades long history of lots of anger about your mother's behavior, yes. ab abuses and criticisms and things like that. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My whole life. My whole so life. And I just wanted her, the reason I wanted her home, and it wasn't even for me, Gary, when I had told the doctors, she's coming to, she's coming home. She's coming home to me. And it was not about me, it was about her. Because the way she went in the hospital, no one was allowed to see her, that whole thing that's going on now in our, in our world. And it was important to me for her to feel love. But yet it gave me the same thing. Yeah. But, it, but that wasn't why I brought her home. I brought her home for her. Yeah. And I, I, it, was so, it was so beautiful. There's a shift, there's a shift along the way from anger to release, from anger to freedom, from anger to love. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing that. Yes. I mean, you're, you're talking about that, okay. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we could have that shift with your, with your siblings? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, that I, that's a tough one. Oh. I thought about that though. I have to say this morning, Gary, I did think about that. I thought, okay, I did it with mom. I don't, I don't, it, it took many years, but I did do it with mom. Well, see the real issue. Let me be teacher for a moment. Okay. The, the real issue isn't what your mother did, said, et cetera, to you over the years. The criticisms, the abuses, and that seems like the real issue. My mother did this. And that, and that, okay. The real issue from our point of view, from the healing point of view, is your response to it. Okay. Your response to it was anger, anxiety, da 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 da, big time. Let me ask you this when you were having these peaceful moments with your mother, hospice time, passing time, et cetera, um, if you can recall, how was your anxiety? I didn't have any. Now, okay. now that you're asking me, I All didn't right. have any. All right. It, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. And don't let me impose things. This is my view, okay? It wasn't there because the cause was gone. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I... I didn't think about it till till now that I didn't have anxiety, but yeah. Okay. Well, and that's a reframe for this purpose here. But the uh, the idea is if we can get to this peaceful release kind of let's get let the anger go, there goes the anxiety because there is no cause for it. Mm -hmm. If we're running around saying, now I'm going to get to my brother so -and, -so and my sisters and whatever, and, and they, how dare they and, and all that stuff, that's expensive. I know, and I was thinking, damn, 
I just, this was like the, such the best experience ever with my mom. I feel so peaceful. Here's my mom passing. I'm so peaceful. And if I didn't have what just happened with my sister, mainly and my, and everybody, everything would be kind of nice right now. Like I, I, you know, people are saying, Oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Which is nice. You know, when someone passes, but I'm, but I don't have that. Like when my dad passed, it was different. It was a different experience as far as you know, you're more, I was more in the, ah, in the crying and the, oh my gosh, much where now I have a different experience because where she's going, I have a different understanding of everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what would it take? This is, you've probably never been asked this question. So just do your best with it. Okay. What would it take for the same kind of release to occur regarding your sisters, siblings, and so on? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I know. Well, guess for me. Yes. Maybe, maybe for, well, there's five of them. So, um, maybe for them to call me and ask me how I'm doing or ask me what happened rather than pick a side and not even talk to me about it or, you know, ignore okay. me. All right. So in what you, what you just said, I'm going to spit this back at you and then you always correct me, please. What you just said is in order for me to feel better, have this release, have this love and so on, they have to do something. I know. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's true. When you put it that way, it's like, that sounds so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> not my words dear not my <laughs> words okay yeah <laughs> that's that's that is a useful reframe by the way because you just yeah. said my my perception about all this is stupid that's what you just said did you not yes i did <laughs> <laughs> you get some you get some kisses okay <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep that's what I did. okay i still don't know the details about what your siblings did, said, and so on. Okay. Except that they're just kind of aloof. You know, they're in la la land. They're just not wanting to be involved, and it's all yours to do. And okay. Now, um, how, how, how am I going to answer? I want to explore this some. Um, Let's let's pick out one thing about one sibling. You need not mention names or anything like that, okay? One thing that stands out to you that if this was corrected, you would have you would feel better, okay? So just give me an instance, a specific event, if you will, okay? Oh, specific event. Um, you want me to tell you about the event? Sure. Uh, um, there's so many details to it, but it's so many shorten it. So everybody was here. My mom had passed and the brothers and sisters were all in my home. And, um, an issue came up about money, a large amount of money that my mom had had in her, in her place, a hiding place, I guess she had, um, which only two siblings knew about. I didn't know about it. And, um, just my two brothers and, we were discussing it. There was an issue with one of the people that worked there where my mom lived and maybe possibly he was in her apartment. You know, we were had this big conversation about, oh, did he take it? And my one sister said, well, I didn't know about it. The sister that lives in my mom's complex, the, the, the supposed caretaker of my mother. So the incident, it, so then she, we were talking about the headstone. I'm, I'm going to shorten this. We we're talking about my, my brother brought up my dad's headstone and said, I've never really cared for the headstone. I want to get a new one. This is, the, I'm leading up to the big thing. <laughs> I want to get a new one. And we all kind of said, yeah, that would be nice. And the one sibling, my sister said, I don't know why we're going to change it. That came from the army. I want to keep it. And so my brother said, uh, you can have, you, you can have it. You can, you can have it. And I said the same thing after he said it. 
good. She goes, you can have it. I go, yeah, you can. She was right next to me. And I go, yeah, you can have it. Yeah, you can have it. And she goes, well, that's a smart ass thing to say. And I said, oh, I meant it. Oh, no, you didn't. That's a smart ass thing to say. Well, you were, you were the one that said this. Well, my brother said it first. He's the one okay. that brought up the tombstone. Okay. And he wanted that I've always wanted to change it. And, and we all kind of agreed and Becky, she didn't, she didn't agree. And which is fine. I wasn't mad at that. It's fine. And she, and so my brother said, well, you, you can have it. Meaning he meant it. Right. And I go, yeah, you can have it. And so she gears it, but, the, but only to me, she says, that's a smart ass thing to say. And I said, no, I mean it. You can have it. Oh no, that was a smart ass thing to say. Said it again. So that kind of it kind of ended at that. But then she then then she was gonna leave and she had taken a gold brace. They had a little bit another part of it too. They brought all this stuff over from my mom's house and it was on my dining room table. And my sisters were going through it. And I had gone over to the table and asked them, can you get can you guys please wait and not do this right now? I wasn't up for it. My mom had just passed. They, they not only did they keep going, they ignored me. So I go back, do my thing. A few minutes later, they kept going and then they start throwing things away, things that they think is not important. I go back over, I go, please, you guys, can you please stop? Ignored me again, which is typical in my family, kept doing it. So, so it's building up in me, right? So now my sister puts on a gold bracelet. I could care less about this gold bracelet, but it's the fact that now she's going to take it home. She, so when she's leaving, this is so out of character for me. I come around, I come around and I, and she, she's, she's getting ready to leave. And, she, and I said, I go, what's that? And she goes, um, Oh, I'm taking it home to see if I want it. She goes, I asked everybody. And I go, you didn't ask me. And she goes, and not one person stood up for me. When I found out later, she didn't ask anybody. Not one person, Gary said the thing. She goes, you didn't ask me. And this was so out of character. I go, I, I don't, I can't, I can't really use the word on this, on this, but I said, get the F out of my house. And I said, and then she just looked. <laughs> you just said, you just said the word, but go ahead. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, get, and the so F I out of, get the F out of my house. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes. And then, and then, and then I said, you owe me an apology. And, and I would have accepted the apology and it could have been over. I go, you owe me an apology. And she says, you owe me an apology. And I go, for what? I was telling you, you could have it. And then she went on again and I said it again, get that out. And um, this is how weird my family is. Nobody says anything. She leaves, nobody says anything. So I said to my brother, I said, did she ask you? And he goes, no. So nobody, here she lies. How did she get away with a lie in front of everybody and they're believing her when they were here in real time? And ignoring you. And ignoring me and continues to ignore me. Yeah. At, the, at the funeral, I sat by myself. It, it, but I didn't, it, it, it's such a weird thing that I've lived my whole life. It's just more obvious now. When you are ignored, and correct me if I have this oh. wrong, okay. <laughs> that is a, a way of saying you don't count, I don't love you, you're not lovable. Yes. Okay. I, I don't, yeah, I don't do well with that. <laughs> right. Okay. And that, from what I'm hearing, is a centerpiece response. A centerpiece response. Uh, yes, they're in, in your view. They're in la la land. They don't pay attention. Da, 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 and then come, then they lie to you, and nobody stands up for you, and you get ignored, and, and you just don't matter in there. You aren't loved. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. Okay.
It's a lot, huh? It's a lot if you see it as a lot. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, okay. and we're, and we're going to go in that direction. We're going to try to get a good start anyway at unloading that. Because see, this is, this is the behavior of somebody else, your siblings in this case. Okay. They are raised in a family with a mother, etc., where the emotions are surfacy. Okay. Yeah. And, for, and for whatever the reason, you, at least you feel, that's the important part, ignored. Mm-hmm. Okay. They may get together on some things, but you won't be part of it. You aren't acceptable. You aren't loved. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now. Yeah. And then there's just one other thing I want to bring up that the, I found out later. So here, nobody asked me why they're here, right? Oh, there, well, there is actually two things. My sister, my other sister who ignored me over at the table, after my other sister left, she says, she said something about, she said something uh, to apologize. Well, well she said, um, I said, well, Connie, you guys just kept going and you didn't, you, you just, you just ignored me. And, she, and so she's playing her game, Gary. And she just goes, I'm sorry. Doesn't look at me, her head's down. I'm sorry. And I've never, I never would have done this before. And I said, I said, I look at her and I go, wow, that's believable. And I start to walk away. Now my sister's very cold, extremely cold. This was shocking to me. I walk away. She gets out of her chair. She stands up and she looks at me and she goes, Didi, I'm really sorry. Shocking. And, and that's real. I mean, that, that was just really shocking. <laughs> so I said, that's all I wanted. And then we hugged each other, which she doesn't do either for a very long time. And it was like, it dissipated because it was in the moment. So a good thing happened right after that really bad thing with her. But then I found out my two brothers went home after they left my place and they drove over to my sister's house to console her because, oh, poor, oh yeah, poor, she got kicked out of the house. But nobody asked me, like, what caused that? Why, why did you say that? What happened? Yeah. Okay. Let's shift for a moment. Something I, I think would be useful exploring, reframing, and this kind of thing. Um, why would your siblings want to be so surfacy, so my term guarded so not not into the love one would like to think a family would have why would that be because they they don't feel love they don't feel love either ah all right and perhaps and i'm guessing but perhaps they're raised by a mother and a father who weren't really good at doing that. Right. And so, and so as they, they learn to be surfacy, they learn to be aloof. It's a way to get around the world that they learned to do. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't make them good, bad, or otherwise, that's just what they learned to do. You learned your own version of that. Maybe yours is more mature than theirs. That's very possible. Okay. Um, but they have a reason for it. There's a cause for it. They learned their, correct me, please. This is what I'm seeing. Not even knowing them, but they're learning. I'm not really lovable either, but I can't let anybody in. And I can get around this world by being surfacy, by being not involved, uh, by lying by ignoring, by somehow or other elevating myself at others' expense like Dee Dee. How, how am I doing? Well, the only thing about that is on the one hand, they say, I'm not getting involved, but they are getting involved because they picked another side. They picked her side by going over to, to ask her, oh, are you okay? We feel so bad. What about me? 
you didn't do that with me. Yeah. Well, okay. Right. So, you, so it's it, that's the only part that I that I could see if they completely did stay out of it, but they don't. They say they're not going to, but then they 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 do actually. All right. All right. Now, we're not trying to excuse the behaviors of your siblings. This is important to recognize in this. We are trying to understand them because that goes a long way towards forgiveness and the release and the peace, okay. Your sister who lied about the bracelet, apparently wanted the bracelet. She's gonna take it home and see if it fits. But this, these are ego things that I'm, that I'm hearing. I, everybody is looking out for themselves in their own way. That, by the way, is something we could, we could label almost everybody, including those listening in. I see a nodded head. Is that a, a big well, time I, well, nodded I, head? No, I mean, I do. I know what you're saying, but the, the, I guess the thing is my history with her. That's typically who she is, where I don't care. Like when the stuff came in, it, I didn't care about the stuff. Well, you care so, about being ignored. I care about being ignored. And, and, and I, yes, and it, and it bothers me. I don't know why it bugs me that she's like that. Like she has to like have everything and do everything where I don't even want it. That's what I was telling you earlier. Why do I care when I don't even want it? Right, all right. You, like everybody else, are trying to search for a way to get through this world. Okay. And like me, like everybody else, you're looking for love. You're getting ignored. You're going to find your own ways to do it. And one of those ways is to get angry about those who don't love you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, and that works well. <laughs> yeah that's a that's what oh, that's a good a good reframing comment okay yes. because the more you do that and get angry about those who yes my term now aren't really capable of mm. giving you the love you want you're nodding your head i don't want it yes that's no, very true. true yes they're not capable yes okay now let me ask you this reframe okay if you went up to a rock a rock <laughs> And said, Rock, give me some water. I want some water right now. Give me your water. That's and, silly. and the rock, the rock goes, ignores you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No water, no water coming from the rock. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. And you want to get upset about that, you can do it. But see, if you get upset yeah. at your siblings <laughs> wanting love. Lack of it being ignored, another way to say that, okay. And they don't know how to give it. Yeah. That's a little stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, yes, when you, I understand. I don't, I have to reframe it, like you said, and look at them that way. I'm trying to get from them what they're not capable of giving me. That's right. That's right. That's not, by the way, at least in my perception, a criticism of them. Right. They haven't developed the ability to do that. Now, all of us have a impaired ability to do that in this separated illusion of a world that we're in. All right. You have it. I have it. We all have it to different degrees. Your siblings, at least compared to you, are hurting a little bit in their, that area. To be, to be let me say that you didn't talk about this with your mother, but I'm gathering, gathering somewhere in this shift with your mother from the, all the anger, the abuses and criticism and stuff to this peaceful place. There was this letting go. Well, you're nodding your head. Tell me if. Yes. Tell, well, I, I, I I must have, and it's something that you can't even, it's not like you can think about it or it, it just happened. I just realized it. I just realized it. Not so, even, I guess, while I was doing it, nothing, I didn't have any judgment of her. I didn't have any, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I couldn't do enough. It was just, and it's interesting because I didn't really notice it as much as my niece watching me noticed it. She yeah, said something yeah. to me later. Okay. She said, I am right. just amazed at what I saw. And so it was kind of, that helped a little bit for me to see it because I don't always see that. Okay. 
Now, I'm I'm imagining your mother being someone who, in, I think we talked about this, but in her background, didn't have a lot of love coming in. That's what that's why she wasn't able to give it out very much. But somehow or other, I'm hearing, but if this last stage of her life interfaced with you, she's now picking up love. Somebody's taking care of me. Despite everything that I've done. Yeah. Somebody's taking care of me. Yes. Now, she is somehow or other accepting, experiencing love. Now, my question to you is, it's kind of a broad question for your siblings. If your siblings, well, let me ask it this way. Would I be correct in assuming that the biggest need your siblings have would be love? Yes. If they all had, were loaded with love, would they behave the way they behave? I would say no. Okay. Probably not. I can't all right. imagine. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a little reframing kind of thing in there. Okay. Well, I think we might be ready for unseen therapists. What do you think? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said before this recording, you might, you know, be a little cloudy in the head or something, but you seem to be very yeah. on point here. Okay, good. Yep. All right. Well, all right. So let's, let's just bring an unseen therapist here. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to be listening to her and weaving whatever I weave. It, <laughs> it won't be me so much as it's her sort of conducting the orchestra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But it's going to be easy for you. All you have to do is just close your eyes and follow yeah. along. Okay. okay. Yes. And um, so let's do that. Let's just see where this goes. Okay. So close your eyes and then take a nice, deep, you know, relaxing breath. And just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, just recall some simple loving moment in your past and nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. Okay. That um, recalling a loving moment is a nice way to invite unseen therapists. What we're really doing is just, as best we can, trying to align with the pure love that is unseen therapist, the pure love that showed up with your mother eventually, the pure love that we would like to bring more of to you so you can stand back and rather than be angry and resentful at your brothers and sisters, you can accept the way they are, how they are, because they need your love, not your, not your anger. In fact, you need your love and not your anger. These things are expensive. So we're gonna go back to a specific event in your world. A one I think you told me was a 10 before you I even finished even finished talking about it. And that's the idea of the your sisters one of them saying that's a smart ass thing to say and then being ignored and all of that. Okay. And so we're going to shift our focus back to that time. Um, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a nudge from unseen therapists to, to go a little different direction here. So just bear, bear with me. This thing about your sister and the, that's a smart ass thing to say and being ignored has a foundation. She or your other siblings may not have said that or things like that, but you were ignored for a long period of time from way, 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 way back. Would I be correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So the foundation is way, way back then. The current thing about that's a smart ass thing to say is something more current, but it's bouncing off of something way back then. 
So we're going to pick a time, a foundational time. We don't need to have all the details for this specific event. In fact, we can even make them up. So pick a time when all your siblings are alive. And there you are. And imagine yourself among them. And they're behaving the way they behave. But you are feeling ignored. Are you, are you able to locate such a thing or at least make it up? Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay. You're being ignored. You don't count. There's something wrong with you. You're defective. You're not lovable. You're not good enough. You don't deserve our love, this kind of response you would have. They may not be saying that to you. They may be in their own world doing their own thing someplace, looking out after themselves as people tend to do. But you are there picking up, being ignored. And in your imagination, let's represent this in a way to unseen therapists. There you are, I'm ignored, I'm ignored, I'm ignored, I'm ignored. What's wrong with me? And in your imagination, just imagine your siblings all talking to themselves, semi-noticing you on the outskirts there, and then turning their backs to you and talking to themselves, giggling, gossiping, whatever they're going to do. But you are all alone, ignored. Can you feel that? Can you say... Okay, yes. good. all right, all right. So this is a representation of a foundational specific event way, way back when. Unseen therapist sees that. Unseen their therapist knows you're feeling, oh, what's wrong with me? She can feel this even anger building up. Why aren't you paying attention to me? And she understands that you don't realize at this young age, they're just doing the best they can. They want to connect with each other in some fashion. And while that's not okay with you, it's what they're doing to take care of themselves. If they truly knew the damage they were creating, truly knew that, ah, chances are they would do something else. But at the moment, this is what they're doing. And you're having this. Let me ask you about your emotion. Are you feeling unloved? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling resentful? Are you feeling guilty? Give me a sense of that, could you? Probably the worst would be the. Um, it's between anger and love. It's like I feel. hurt okay so unseen therapist and, 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 and by the way dd this is really going to be a joint thing we're all we're three of us are together you me and the unseen therapist okay so feel free at any time if something is coming up for you to voice it so we know so it's on the table, okay? okay. It's a, it's a three-way effort going on here. But now Unseen Therapist sees what's going on here with you, seeing your response to all of this. She's understanding in a way you can't at this younger age what's really going on with your siblings. They're just looking out for themselves and trying to join with each other. And for whatever their reasons, you're not included at this moment, or at least that's your perception. She understands that in a way that you don't have the maturity to do at this young age. So she speaks to you and she says, Dee Dee, you, you may be perceiving me as being something outside of yourself. God, people often think of God being up there or something outside of themselves, but yeah, I'm really inside 
you. I'm also inside all your siblings. Your mother let me be inside near the end of her life. I'm asking you with permission for me, instead of being your friend outside holding your hand, let me just blend in with you and be you. Is that okay with you? Yes. All right. So in your imagination, just let her come in. With her maturity now, with her ultimate love, which you're not in touch with under this, these circumstances, you're feeling ignored. Okay. No love here. Trying to get water from a rock. And that's what Unseen Therapist is saying to you. Your siblings are just like you. They're children of God, but they don't know how to give love. They weren't taught that. It's not their fault. They weren't taught that. You can get angry at them, but you're going to get angry at the rock for not giving you water. They weren't taught that. They don't know how, says unseen therapist with her maturity and lending that to you at your young age. They don't know how. So they'll do all these things. The problem is you're taking it on, not understanding that they're your siblings, like you, but for the moment, your siblings are calling for love. She says, you know, people are doing one of two things. They're either exhibiting love or they're calling for it. Calling for it. Let me ask you, are your siblings calling for love? Um, not sure. I, I know they, I know they need love. Okay. I, I, I think they're just numb. All right. Well, okay. In a way, says Unseen Therapist, that is a form of calling for love. They don't know what to do about it. Okay. So they do their various behaviors, not even realizing they are calling for love. But love is something they really don't know much about. So unseen therapists now within you is saying, well, let's just take a look at them, you know. And let's imagine that when they're turning their back to you in this made up specific event, ignoring you, that you were perceiving this as a, as soon as they did that, ignored you, it was like arrows coming at you. We don't love you, you don't count, you don't belong, and so on. Arrows coming at you. And if they really hit you, they would sting. And they've stung in the past over and over and over and over again. Is this metaphor working? Yes. Okay. And so now with me inside you, Dee Dee, we're going to slow these arrows down. They're not coming so fast you can't dodge them if you want to. But more than that, we're going to slow them down. And they're going to have a label on them. And it's going to be error, 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 E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. They're making an error. They're not understanding how much love there is that they can really, they can really join with you and get the kind of love that you have somehow or other been able to do more with than they can. Right. So here comes the air slow motion arrows and they gradually, as they come towards you and you look at them through un using unseen therapist eyes, they dissipate. They aren't really arrows. They change form. They are little puff balls of cotton. And here they come and each of these little puff balls of cotton has a set of lips on it where they, and they're ready to kiss you once they hit. <laughs> Here they come, one on a cheek, one on a shoulder, one on the forehead. Here they come. Kiss, 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 okay. Your brothers, your siblings don't know how to do this. 
but unseen therapist knows how to transform this for you. This is not what they're actually doing. This is to shift your response. So they're not arrows anymore because they don't, they don't even know the arrows are your perception. They're just looking out after themselves. So your perception now are little cotton balls that kiss you. Gentle. Okay. And then we're going to do something else. Here's your brothers and sisters turning their back on you. And these arrows start to come. But as they start for, first start to emanate and leave, come towards you, your mother steps in between. Your mother, not the mother that was critical and abusive as you were growing up, but the mother that you knew in the last moments of her life. She stands in front. And she says, these arrows don't need to be. And they pass through her meaninglessly and just fall to the ground because your mother's love has finally, you have finally recognized what love is. And your mother is now protecting you. And we now realize that what your siblings need is not your anger. They need your love. Not your anger. They need your love. So now we're going to shift one more time. And in this specific event, we're gonna go take this anger and the hurt involved, and we're gonna represent it for unseen therapists as a unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 like that. We're not asking you to actually create a vibration around your heart, just it's in the imagination. It's a representation. There it is, whatever's left of it. I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. It's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. We're gonna shift that into they don't even know what they're doing. They don't know what love really is. Ah, let's leave this be. So unseen therapist sees this unwanted vibration around your heart, recognizing what it represents, and then sends a gentle healing breeze that moves towards this vibrating heart surrounds it with the love she's sending it now from outside but I'm forgetting she's inside so now that she's inside she's generating this breeze inside around your vibrating heart she's just nothing but love and the vibrating heart ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, can't survive in that love and so it goes ta 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 and fades. Now to end this, Dee Dee, take whatever time you need and imagine this vibrating heart being your anger and the hurt, the not so useful emotions involved at being ignored. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Unseen therapists love the cool breeze. It all fades. Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. So repeat that a time or two or three or whatever you want until you've gone as far as you think you can go. And just open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk.
Okay. So were you able to follow along okay? Uh, yes, I, yeah, I did. Uh, competing okay. thoughts maybe, okay. things like that? Um, I was getting dizzy a lot, but um, no, not so much competing thoughts. I was pretty much with you as when you, the steps you were going through. Yeah, it's pretty much, I was, I was, um, I was not feeling as much emotion as I thought I would. I thought possibly that I would start crying and I'd be, I didn't feel that. Um, it was a lot, it, it was a lot too because there's so many people involved. I was trying to group it because everyone's a little different. So it was kind of, you know, my mind was doing that a little bit. Like, well, he doesn't do that. She, you know, trying to juggle the five of them. So I yeah. tried to just go with the big, big picture. Um, the, the idea was but, at, at the core, they are all the same. At the core, they don't know how yeah. to give love and, and so on. Yeah. Yes. They may behave a little differently here and there, but yeah anyway but go ahead I, I don't want to inter interrupt you keep going well i didn't have as much i kind of was just with it i didn't um experience that much of a up and down you know it was more just hearing what you were saying and want, wanting to accept it and just kind of go with it rather than rather than me control it like trying i just tried to be there just be be in it right now like i really wanted to be in the moment yeah. Like just be here and don't control, just be here. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's do a little testing if we can. Um, this uh, specific event having to do with the headstone and all of that, where one of your sisters says, that's a smart ass thing to say. Close your eyes. Go back over that in your own mind. Run that movie, if you will. And uh, tell me, that was a t an easy 10 to begin with, but is it still a 10? No. It's not a 10. <laughs> it actually kind of makes me laugh. Well, that <laughs> I mean, it's it, it because it's so, it's so it's just it was it was a big thing to happen you know and um had i you know if i hadn't have been in the in the anger yeah i would have respond i would have responded like the love thing you talk about when she said it rather than me go to my my stuff when she said it to say to her at that moment maybe something to her like like, like oh why'd you Oh, I don't know, something nicer or something. I don't know, just something nicer. Like, yeah. because because it was so out there and my brother had just said it. It was obviously targeted to me. So rather than just, just to have a different response rather than I immediately go to, to protection. Anger. Yeah, protection's a good word. I didn't use it any place in our session, but protection's a good word. We got to be protected from, yeah all this stuff and anger is a bounce back response. Okay. Well, you went from a, if I remember it right, when I first asked you about that, I, I think you even went 10 <laughs> or something. It was 10, it was 10 and up. T 10 and up, okay. And you just laughed about it. Yes, I was thinking, I was just, I was, when I was thinking about the first thing when she said, well, that's a smart ass thing to say, I did, yeah. It was, it was like, what? <laughs> Well, okay. Now, all that's a good sign of a good start shift. Yeah. Yes. Good start shift. Okay. Now, we recorded that session. We recorded everything we did here for you. I'm going to send that to you. And I would urge you to go back at least over that. You know, I'd go over all yeah. of it, but, but I would focus on the session itself and i'd run it two three four maybe more times because each time you do that it's likely to embed a little more a little more a little more a little more okay okay um yeah and hopefully you will begin seeing 
your siblings in a different light, a more forgiving, a more peaceful light. And as you do that, maybe even hopefully other things in your world that tends to irritate you, and we all have them, okay? <laughs> maybe a little lighter. Maybe the anxiety will get better. Wouldn't surprise me. Insomnia might get better. Wouldn't surprise me. If not, there's more to do. Okay, but these are causes underlying lots of stuff that shows up as our lives unfold. Yes, yes. Okay. I feel better. <laughs>